Adjust exposure, correct color, enhance image details and more with the Adjust and Filter tool. It's located here in the toolbar or use the A hotkey. A good rule of thumb before starting projects is to always duplicate the original image as a backup. Since the adjustment functions are destructive, this will be helpful in case elements from the original image are needed again. At the top of the menu are the Auto Adjust functions. While some would prefer to make adjustments manually, these functions can also serve as a starting point for further enhancements. Auto analyzes, then gives image a simple contrast and vibrance boost. If the original image has enough of these values, changes will be minimal. Click and hold down on the Compare button to view the image before adjustment. Release to see the after. Click on Reset to start over. To introduce quick artistic effects, the black and white function desaturates and converts color images into grayscale. Pop adjusts color vibrance and light while also increasing clarity. This will enhance image color and detail. The Color section provides adjustment options for all things color-related. Vibrance will boost muted colors, only affecting colors that are not already bright. It will also keep skin tones from getting overly saturated or intense to the point of it being unnatural. The Saturation slider controls overall color intensity. Unlike vibrance that only affects muted color tones, saturation applies a global adjustment to all colors. Unless intended, over-application of saturation can cause colors to become unrealistic. It also affects image quality. Moving the slider to the left desaturates and removes color information. Here's a comparison between the original image on the left, vibrance in the middle, and saturation on the right. Both vibrance and saturation are at the maximum adjustment value of 100. Although colors on the vibrance example are more vivid, skin colors still appear to be more natural. However, on the saturation example, the skin is now in an overly orange tone. The temperature slider allows for color temperature adjustments. Introduce a cooler tone to your images by sliding left, or slide right for warmer tones. The tint slider adjusts the red and green tones in an image. Slide left to increase reds, or right for greens. Both temperature and tint are used to correct white balance and achieve more natural color tones for images. Adjusting the Hue slider would shift and change the overall color tones of an image. Covering aspects related to lighting or the tonal range of an image would be the Light section. Tonal range means the amount of tones between the lightest and darkest parts of an image. Brightness equally controls the overall light and dark values of an image. Drag right to brighten, left to darken. Exposure adjusts the midtones to increase or decrease the exposure of an image. Contrast is the difference between the highlights and shadows of an image. Dragging the slider to the right increases intensity for both, bringing out details and definition. Dragging left does the opposite, making images dull. Going all the way left will completely gray out images. The black slider controls the darkest tones of an image to make them darker or lighter. These tones will be pure black and do not contain data. 
While increasing the black tones do improve contrast, pay close attention to the process, as it can darken and remove image details from shadowed areas, making them pure black. Just like the base of this chess piece. The white slider would control the brightest or pure white tones. And in similar fashion would cause highlight blowout if increased excessively. The highlights function can control or help bring back details in the bright areas of an image. On the bumper section of this car, details are present but not obvious due to the highlights being too bright. By lowering the highlights, more of the bumper texture is now visible. Some of the brighter parts of the image will also be darkened. Shadows does the opposite and recovers details from dark or shadowed areas. Shifting focus to the background of the image, we can see more hidden details as the slider is dragged to the right. However, do keep in mind that these two functions can only recover detail if there is data present, meaning that they are not completely black or white. And while they might seem similar when compared to the black and white sliders, Highlights and shadows cover a tonal range that is much more narrow and will be limited by the amount set by the black and white sliders. Meaning, if the value for the black and white sliders are increased, the shadows and highlight sliders can only recover as much data that is available within that defined range. Use the detail functions to fine-tune image definition. Sharpen boosts the edge definition of objects by increasing contrast between light and dark pixels, making the outlines more prominent. However, pay close attention to the image and apply in moderation so sharpened details are just right. Oversharpening will affect image quality, causing artifacts and even loss of detail. Also, noise and compression artifacts present on the image should first be reduced before sharpening or they will be sharpened and intensified altogether. Sharpening can do little for an image that is too blurry, so having a good image to start with will always be important. The clarity slider adjusts contrast in the mid-tones highlighting texture. This tightens up the image and enhances details. Some good examples for application would be on scenery, urban photography, or wildlife images. While clarity can be used on images of people, it might not always be the first choice as it can really amplify the pores and wrinkles of the skin, and sometimes in unflattering ways. Unless it's a portrait shot where special attention is drawn to the complexion of the subject to introduce a dramatic effect. Of course, just like the sharpen slider, over-application will affect image quality, so increase in moderation. In reverse, drag left on the slider if texture details are too harsh to soften them. You can use the smooth slider to smooth out areas of an image such as textures or skin. Add a blur effect to images with a blur slider. Effective blurring can introduce a unique aesthetic to your edits and even emphasize focus. For example, blurring the background of an image to create a shallow depth of field effect and draw attention directly to your foreground subjects. Here's how you can quickly do so. Make a duplicate of your original image, then extract the background with a cutout tool. Select the layer below it and adjust the blur slider as preferred.
The grain slider adds a film grain texture over images to replicate the raw nostalgic look of photos shot on film, and goes quite well with black and white images. Adding a little grain can also help improve definition in blurry images, or those with slight image compression artifacts. Here's an example. The image on the left is the original. The one on the right has improved details in the blurred areas due to the added grain. Composites can also benefit from added grain as it can provide overall consistency to the image. The scene sliders add effects to your images. A vignette creates a framing effect by darkening the edges of an image. This establishes a focal point on subjects that are in the middle. The Glamour Slider applies a subtle blur and intensifies the dark areas of an image. With that in mind, always be sure to preserve details where possible and not completely black out dark areas. The Bloom Slider blurs and brightens the image instead, creating a subtle glowy dreamlike effect. Since it adjusts the highlights, pay attention to the bright areas to avoid blowouts. Generally used for landscape and cityscape photos taken under hazy or foggy weather conditions, the dehaze slider can assist in bringing back some contrast. Toning adds color to either the highlights, shadows, or both. Experiment with different combinations to create unique color effects for your images. The Fill option adds a color fill to an image. Adjust color opacity via the Amount slider or use the blend modes from the drop-down menu to achieve different results. And that brings us to the end of our Adjust and Filter tool exploration. Hope it has given you a better understanding of their functions.